I don't know how many of you are here from the teaser I released a couple of hours back or maybe you're just here because you like the title of the video. Either way, I can promise you that you won't regret it. So our main motive of this tutorial is to replace the shitty texture with the beautiful moon one in compositing. And you can place this texture anywhere on, this, on that sphere and have all the control you could ever want. And to make it even more interesting, we're going to use some passes to make it react to light and shadows and make it look like it was rendered straight out of 3D. I know in the teaser I said we'll be using the RGB mats, but instead we'll be using crypto mats, which basically do the same thing. Well, enough talk. Let's do some compositing. Alright, so here we are in Blender and all I have here is a simple scene setup. So let me just quickly go to EV and show you guys what's really going on over here. So I have a model downloaded from Mixamo. I call him Guy because that's because I'm creative. And then I have a sphere with a what was this planet called again? Jupiter, yeah, uh, Jupiter texture, which is what we're going to be changing. Then, and we're not changing it because I have anything against Jupiter, you know, we're just, we're just changing it because well, just to show that I can control stuff to have power over things here. That's really, you know, power, control, secret to good relationships, control. <laughs> and then I have a backdrop, really nothing fancy going on over, over here. If you take a look at the shading, we have a backdrop. The back, backdrop shading uh, has this particular turned off and the roughness. This this just has this whole thing attached to this one again specular and roughness turned down and this whole thing uh, when you import it in then it will automatically have these textures connected to the principal bsdf so you don't really have to worry about it really mixamo is just fun so few things to consider while you're following along with this tutorial one you need to have your objects or you need your objects to be uv unwrapped otherwise this one worked second would be and I'm just gonna disable or I'm just gonna go to my viewport second would be to be in cycles because only in cycles do we get access to the UV pass which is pretty great that's that's one of my favorite passes so now three the third part which is the passes so we need to have UV pass and this is a must you one of the passes that we'll be selecting will be normals uh, but really UV pass is the most important one along with them we'll be selecting normal uh, denoising data uh, I don't know okay I'll just check it but I don't think I'll be using that but whatever and this this diffuse and glossy passes now this tutorial is not gonna be about what these passes are because then it would just take too freaking long but I will try my best to explain it in a simple way so that you might understand what's going on but really this is an advanced tutorial at least I think it is advanced I don't know so I won't be explaining what these are and there are a bunch of tutorials out there explaining what these are Jacob Holiday has a great tutorial, in fact, and he does. He, he that guy made diagrams, so yeah, <laughs> who can beat that shit? And then I'm gonna enable crypto mat objects. And basically, what crypto mats are, they give us mats on different objects, objects, so we we can later max them out. Yeah, and yeah, that's really it for the passes section. Uh, and it's preferred now. I have already put this texture into the blender system and you'll see why uh, for, in some cases you might not have this uh, this texture loaded in but it's good to have the text or it's preferred to have the texture loaded in really you can foresee that you really want to change the texture in future in compositing but really if it's loaded in then it has a few advantages really and you'll see that in the compositing part of this tutorial but yeah just wanted to know that I have a texture loaded in in the texture tab right here and I think that's really it mm, everything set up mm, what you can do is when we hit the render button you can just save this whole thing as an EXR so that way even if we kind of end up doing some shitty things or well blender crashes that happens so you have all you always have a backup of what you just rendered all right so with that all said cycle check GPU compete if you have it samples whatever you want performance 256 by 256 that's because you know i'm using graphic card and read it somewhere i read it on internet that that's how you should keep it really didn't do my research here you can just choose whatever you want and then yeah that's it that's really it so i'm just gonna hit render and i'll see you 
when it's done. Or you can just watch me, you know. It's up to you. Nah, I'm not gonna allow you to do that now. Flash forward. Alright, so the render is done and I am in the compositing tab. So just click use nodes and you will see two nodes up here which are the render layers node and the composite node. I deleted them because I just wanted to start from scratch. So shift a search render layers. So there you go. Then shift a search and composite. So I'm just gonna zoom in over here a bit and then just connect this. Ah. All right. So now if you view this, just right here and I'm not seeing this. And the reason for that is because I have my backdrop disabled, backdrop disabled. So once I do that, I am able to see this. But since this is a tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a window just like this. Set this to image editor and change this to the viewer node. Scooch this over just like that. Maybe even scooch this over. Yeah. And then disable backdrop over here. So we can completely focus on the nodes over here and at the same time have a look, a good look at what we're doing. So now that that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild my composite using the uh, render process. And I'll show you or I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys why we do that in a sec. But first, let's just rebuild this. So Blender has its own formula of rebuilding this whole thing up which is basically combining by, or adding the direct and indirect passes being glossy and diffuse and then adding them with their color represent or color respectives. So add in a mix node, like oh, mix and then connect the diffuse direct and diffuse indirect, set it to add and then duplicate this one then connect the color to the bottom socket, the diffuse color, that is, and the match the add output to the top socket. And then if you view this, we get this, and this is nothing. And actually, we need to set this to multiply. Yeah, so now we get that. So I'm just going to duplicate this, and then just connect the glossy direct and glossy indirect. And then glossy color. And then I'm going to duplicate this add node. Then connect this to. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's view this. So basically, we have just rebuilt our scene from. And you can take a look at it. If I view this, which is the image output, and if I view this, it's basically the same. And you might ask, why do we need that? Well. With this, we get to have more control over this, and in the later part of the tutorial, you'll see why. So now that that's done, let's replace our texture. So I'm going to duplicate this render layers node, and I'm just simply going to view this. And I might as well bring the viewer down. All right. So first, let's bring in the image that 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 we want to replace this Jupiter texture with. So I already have it saved, which is this moon texture. Like it or not, it's it's made by NASA. So when they're not building or not doing their space stuff, they do this, which is awesome, actually. <laughs> yeah, I really like this moon texture. So for us to be able to map this on top of this U or on top of this sphere, we need a node which is called Map UV, which is really awesome. I can't stress how beautiful that node is so i'm just going to connect the moon texture to the image output or the image input of the map uv node and then the uv output which is over here to this one and that's that, that that's kind of the obvious step really and then if you view this you'll get to see that the moon texture has mapped completely over everything that has a uv map and by the way i do that by holding control shift so pressing control shift no sorry control spacebar yeah control spacebar all right so that's step one so step two is to tell blender or the compositor to just show this moon texture only on top of the spear and not nothing else so we do that by with the help of cryptomats so i'm just going to duplicate this 
And as I said, crypto mats basically give us mats which we can use to mask stuff out. Stuff out. So I'm just gonna add in a crypto mat by healing shift a search crypto mat. Now, bunch of inputs, a lot of outputs. So basically, we use this image that is the combined image, which is this, as the image over here. So we just plug that in, simple. Then over here, we see crypto 00101, sorry, 000102. And over here, we have crypto object 000102. So this is again kind of obvious. Sometimes you might get some different numbers over here, but just plug in in the ascending order. So when that's done, now if you view this, we see nothing. But if you view the mat, we see a black, which means we have to add in a mat. Now over here in the big section, I'm just you know shuffling with Control Shift. Uh, the big section, we see a bunch of colors. Or actually, three colors, not a bunch of them. So what we have to do is we have to add in the color, and whichever color we choose, this crypto mat node is gonna produce a mat for it. So let's click on the add, and then we get this eyedropper select our sphere or I guess this is cyan I, I don't know then if you view the image we see that we have completely maxed out the Jupiter or the sphere whatever you want to call it but we're not interested in the image output we're more interested in the mat this but first let's add in a mix node which is this and then let's mix these two bad boys together so we get this which is really nothing else than this this output but this is where the mat comes in handy so when i plug the mat in the factor this magic happens so basically yeah it's the basically what this mix node is doing is wherever there is this white wherever there is this mat it's showing the bottom out bottom output which is nothing but this yeah so now that that's done, we're kind of there. But now you'll notice that we have a bunch of problems, which is, again, the lighting, it's super bad. And we have basically no shadows. So there's really no point of doing this if we don't get the shadows and make it look like it's real. So how do we do that? Oh, I guess I started playing my animation player for some reason. Not that it's animated, the whole scene, but whatever. Well, now this is where the render plus will come in. So this right, this thing right here is nothing but the light, light information. And then we add the color information. And with the same thing, this is the glossy, which is reflective information. And then when we can combine these two, we get the final output, right? So what we wanna do is we, we wanna add this, what this output uh, into somewhere between over here before it even reaches this stage where we get the final output so where would we add in so let me just space it out well adding over here doesn't really make sense because this is nothing but lighting information right the diffuse is direct and diffuse indirect but if you take a look at our diffuse color now diffuse color contains the texture information and that texture information is getting multiplied over here with the light information so the sensible and that is the correct thing to do would be to add this before it even reaches this stage right so i'm just gonna add or i'm just gonna duplicate this mix node put it over here and then just plug this thing right here so if we view this we get this so we we kind of there we got the shadows working and it's kind of getting the same lighting that we had uh i think with this one not i think it definitely with this one but here's the thing take a look at this image which is right here and then take a look at the output that we're producing completely different now, as you can see the shadows are darkening we are also having some changes over here and again the background it kind of changes it's it's kind of a white and gray transition transition over here but here we get this from black to gray, a direct gray transition. But yeah, whatever that is, uh, we can we can just tell that that's different. That's different. And the reason for that is we are introducing this image directly in between this. And that's wrong because we only get 
uh, ah, God, all right here. We only get the final composited output when it reaches this stage. So it's obvious that when we introduce that or whatever changes we make to this image and then bring it in between this color output, which is over here, we are bound to get some disturbances and changes in the final output. So what if instead of using this image, we use the we use one of these diffuse passes because that's where that's really where the magic is happening. Now we really can't use the diffuse direct and diffuse indirect because those are nothing but light. But the diffuse color, as I said earlier, that, that contains the color information. So instead of using this pass to define uh, where we mix this whole thing with what if we use the diffuse color and if you plug this in now now we're only modifying and we're whole, we're basically modifying this with the diffuse color and now if we take a look at our final output boom we get this so now that that is awesome right if you take a look the shadows are working there's no light changes over here the background looks the same the shadows they look the same if you don't believe me just view this the only difference is the moon okay so cool but let's say that you only want the moon to appear on top or on the top side of the sphere you know because you're such a control freak really control that's what whole compositing is all about having control over your objects so let's do that I'm going to duplicate this node and basically the the way that we're going to achieve this control over where the moon appears is using the normals pass and normals are nothing but the direction your the faces of your spears or your object are facing that's really it and if we add in a separate xyz rgba node sorry separate rgba node and connect our normals to it and if you view this so our channel contains the direction of the faces that are facing that way uh, really have to tell with that is i guess the left side then the green channel contains everything that's going to the left side and the blue channel contains everything that is going upwards that's exactly what we need but where would we plug it in now we can't directly involve this uh information in the diffuse color because that would just mess things up and there's no way we can use that information in here so the only way or i think the only uh place where we can introduce this information is where we is this this whole connection from the mat to the factor so the way to do that would be and again we want the blue channel add in a mix node plug it in here make sure that this is the way that you're choosing and then and by the way i'm in the, the connection or whatever you get you're, you're smart you get it then let's connect the blue output to the bottom one uh, it doesn't really matter in this case because what we're going to be use we are going to be using is multiply so with that done if we view this we get this and that's okay uh, but if you take a look at this output this whole thing the, the whole white here is over here but if you take a look at over here it's the same thing it's just the other things are cropped out because of the mat. Oh, view this. So you can see that there's a kind of a transition between them. So to get uh, get what we want, which is exactly a half half of it, we can add in a mat node over here. Set this to multiply, and then choose. Or just mess around let's, let's just go with two and see what's happening well we said this well why is this happening because uh usually uh this this values are mapped this white values and the black values they're mapped from zero to one right but when we're multiplying it basically we're multiplying the values as well so they're overshooting you know they're going beyond one beyond zero so they're they're into negatives as well as the positive this this value is beyond minus one beyond zero sorry so this this is going in the negative direction this is the blue things they're going in the positive direction but they're going plus one that's not what we want so we want to tell blender to just come so just, just don't let them overshoot you know just keep them 
in between 0 and 1 and there is a simple button to do that and that is the clamp as you can see clamp result of the node 2.00 then one range so let's just hit that and boom so this pass right here which is the blue one gets us this whole thing so now if you view this ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. so you can be creative and just choose one of these or if you want to have more control because remember you're human you would want that so i'm just going to delete this by hitting control x you can just use x but then when you use control x the previous connection is restored so i'm just going to add in a normal node over here and what this normal node allows us to do is well first all right so right now we're let's view it through a normal output and you'll see nothing but if we view through the dot output we get this and this is completely opposite of what we're seeing over here so yeah that's just crap but either way negating this thing is hard but what it basically allows us to do is to s select the mask or the direction that the normals are facing as per your wish so don't look over here and select just keep Keep your eye over here to the viewer node and then make changes so let's say okay i'm happy with this one so instead of this normal output going into the image socket just collect the dot output and if you take a look over here boom now that is awesome so i can't really trust enough how awesome this is how awesome blender is how awesome the uv node is i mean you're completely doing this <coughs> sorry about that you're completely doing this in the compositing and you have all the power that you need but also uh, right now the seam is behind this sphere so you are not uh, the sphere so you're not seeing this but eventually if you're if you have an animation then the, if the the sphere is spinning like this or something like whatever then you will see that and that's one of that's one of the limitations and that's why we need to use this effect as subtly as possible or we can just replace like we did in this one but really this is it and for some time I'm just gonna for some reason you want to replace a texture that is already in your blender scene so to do that just search the texture node which is right here and I already have the texture loaded in as well so what's the difference between this using this and this well this node uh, basically gives us control over all these things and basically the scale node will allow us to tile so I'm just gonna choose this as this one and right now as you, you can see nothing is happening but as I change the values to let's say 2 you'll notice that this whole thing is getting tiled so if I change it to something like 10 yeah this is getting tiled and uh, excuse me again Really, for this case, we really don't need to tell it, but for some complex shapes or something that, that you might need to, you know, use styling or whatever. It's really up to you. Uh, Why am I to stop you? But yeah, so this is it, you know. Uh, this is the whole thing. This is the whole setup, and you are replacing textures in post production. Now, that is awesome. And to think that a free software like Blender can do that, I mean, yeah, mind blown. Now you can do a lot of stuff you can add moss or something like that or some texture that you forgot and you can basically play around with the settings over here you know there's a lot that we can do but they're really cutting it short over here so yeah guys and one thing one thing before i leave you guys off is i would recommend you to always go back to your scene and rendering the stuff out right now stuff like this yeah it's acceptable to do it in post production but stuff like relighting or even adding pictures my advice for you is to just go back to your scene and re-render it again but for some reason you don't those those options are not available then that's when you would use this all right and you would be getting there there are there are a lot of cons one of them would be the uh what do you call it seam yeah seam when it's visible it's gonna look ugly it's gonna look shitty so but then again you can you know blur it out or something like that it's it's compositing you can do a whole lot of shit in that and again one of the limitations would be uh 
not limitations but one of the problems when you add textures or replace textures is uh, reflection now this is a diffuse surface but if it were a metallic surface or anything that catches reflection then you would see the Jupiter over here and not the moon so what you can do is just you know 3d tag your scene and then just flip it or do whatever you know that would be again some heavy duty compositing and yeah you can do it but you know there's just some stuff that you have to take care of but either way you know i really hope you learned something new today uh, if you do end up using this in your own renders and stuff like that then feel free to send it to me i'm on instagram this this is my instagram handle i also have a discord server which is well it's it's filled with people that i can count on my fingers so but yeah it's a growing community right and if you enjoy my tutorials and if you feel like supporting me then yeah patreon i'm not i'm just gonna say it once and yeah that's really it i really enjoyed making this one and i will continue to do some awesome blender tutorials and i would like to i guess mention daniel craft i think that's his name uh just when i'm about to record this tutorial i get a recommendation on youtube saying he kind of did a whole like a 30 minute tutorial on all blender compositing uh notes so yeah I, I was kind of i searched on youtube about uv pass and there's literally nothing and i thought i was going to be the one to introduce uv pass or at least show you guys how to do it but apparently it's him he did it but he also showed us a lot of stuff like blender passes and sorry compositing nodes and stuff and really the texture pass that i the texture node that i brought it in that was because i saw his video so daniel craft thank you so much you are a hero and you will be rem remembered but yeah uh that's it i am planning on making some cool tutorials out in future but okay i'm just gonna stop talking this is this is not a chit chat session this is a tutorial and it's over so all right guys so i'm just gonna ba go back and just completely replace this but yeah i enjoyed making this one i hope you learned something i'll see you in the next one until then be infinite